Hey Kevin here, Mr. DIY Dork from DIYDork.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make a cool little piece of artwork on plywood using spray paint and some tape and some really cool little graphic techniques. And uh, the reason I'm doing it is because I was reading through the comment section of one of my older videos uh, where I made the wall mounted stand up desk and they were wondering how I had made the little graphic paint job on top. So I thought I'd go ahead today and make a little piece of artwork using the exact same technique so that I could explain it a little better. So anyway, check this out, it's pretty cool. All right, so the supplies you need to make this little piece of artwork is pretty simple. Of course, you're gonna need wood. You could use regular solid wood or plywood. The main thing to uh, keep in mind is that you start with a smooth surface. So on this board right here, I actually sanded it with 60 grit. Now I know 60 grit is actually pretty rough, but it's totally smooth enough for what we're doing here. You just wanna make sure it's not like, you know, a piece of driftwood or, uh, you know, like the plywood that's used for sheathing outside the house that's like super bumpy with cracks everywhere, knots and all that, you're probably going to have paint bleeding on that. So you want to make sure whatever you're doing is nice and smooth. Also, you, of course, you're going to want tape. You could get away with regular masking tape, but I've had really good luck with green painter's tape. And then a squeegee is going to help even more with that. And then I like to use an X-Acto blade to uh, cut my tape, but you could use scissors. I just find this is a little easier. Of course, the pencil tape measure, uh, just to do a little bit of measuring and then finally spray paint. We're going to paint with this and the reason I'm using the silver metallic is I'm going to make a graphic very similar to how I painted the top of my stand-up desk. I had someone ask how I did the graphic on there and I guess I didn't explain it too well on the video so I thought I'd make a little piece of artwork that's very similar to that. So that's it. I'll show you uh, how to get set up and uh, get it kind of prepared and then we'll start making it. It's pretty easy. So to start off, we need to kind of set a perimeter and a, you know, a border of where we want the uh, graphic to sit. And I want mine pretty much centered in the middle, but I want some clean, fresh, just wood edges on the side. So what I'm going to do is take one inch painter's tape, and I'm just going to line it up to the two sides, the right and the left side. Just line it up just like that and set it smooth. Um, if it bows out too much, of course you want to straighten it, but if it's a little curvy, it's okay. You're not really going to notice. All right, so I'll do that. I'll do the other side, and then I'll show you how to set up these two sides. All right, now that the left and the right sides are taped off, I'm gonna do the bottom and the top. And the board, like I said, is 10 inches wide. I decided to make my graphic about six inches centered. So that means we need to tape off about two inches on each side. So at the eight inch mark, and at the two inch measurement here, I'll make little tick marks. And I've already done it to the other side. So then what we'll do is I'll take a little bit wider tape, like an inch and a half tape or so, pull a piece off, and I will just put it underneath those lines, join them. So now we have a bottom edge to our graphic, okay? And then, of course, we want to cover up the rest of the wood there because we don't want any paint getting on there. So just overlap your other piece of tape just a little bit, and then you can fold it over, all right? And just do that again, fold it over to the edge, and then later on we'll put some tape here, and I'll also do it up here, and then we'll be ready to set up the graphic. So I'll show that to you next. All right, now it's time to actually have a little fun. We're going to lay out the graphic. And I'm going to do it just like I did on the uh, desktop, and that was with no further measuring. It's just doing it all by eye, and it's not very difficult at all, and uh, it should turn out really cool. So one thing to keep in mind is you want your tape to be kind of in proportion to however big your graphic is. And since this is only about six by 18 or so, uh, I decided to go ahead and use the skinniest tape I had, which is a little thinner than three quarters of an inch. But if you're using a big thing like on a tabletop, you could probably go a lot wider tape. All right, so what I'm doing is tearing off a little piece and I'm coming here at the corner. I'm gonna start the corner of the wood. I'm gonna eyeball this edge right here, this top edge and I'm actually gonna bring the tape up there, okay? And lay that out. You wanna make sure that your tape is long enough that it passes the uh, two green borders. Then what we're gonna do is the same thing. We're gonna lay out a few by eyeballing a three quarter inch gap in between them, okay? So I'm just gonna assume that's pretty close right there. All right, so lay that one out. I'll only do about maybe one or two more of these and then we'll change the direction to really change up the uh, design. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. You wanna make sure it doesn't get too crooked and it's not too skinny or too fat. 
So just eyeball it, make sure they all look pretty even, and then tape it down. Okay, since this graphic is not very long, I'm gonna go ahead and change direction right now. So I'm gonna tear off another piece. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna look at that corner up there. I'm gonna eyeball about a three quarter inch wide uh, little gap there, and then I'll tape that off. All right, now this is, has overlapped that a little bit, so this is where your X-Acto knife will come into play. You just take it, cut the little piece a little short. It ends right on top of this one here, and now we're good. All right, and let's do the same thing. Tear off a piece. We're gonna make sure that it only overlaps this little green piece here, this tape right here, that it doesn't, you know, doesn't do that. Eyeball three quarters of an inch and tape that down all right i'll do it again eyeball three quarter of an inch make sure it looks even it's not too fat doesn't angle or anything all right now i think we're going to change direction again and this time i'm going to go let's see how do i want to do this i think i'm just going to go straight i'm going to see what happens if i go straight so I eyeball roughly three quarters of an inch Tape it off. I'm just going to end over here and we'll just have to uh, cut that later. All right, do the same thing. Eyeball three quarter of an inch. Tape it. All right, I'll do one more. Eyeballing it. Looks pretty good. All right, that one's a little long over here, so I'll cut it. All right, then we'll end that little design by just going straight here. So how about, or actually, let's angle it a little bit just to keep us on our toes. All right, so tape that off, and now with this overhang right here, you can just use your X-Acto knife to cut those. Just right along the tape line, cut all those. Tear them off. All right. And then I think for the uh, top gap up here, I think we'll just go straight up and down. So we'll eyeball, I'll tell you what, I'll start right here. Eyeball three quarter, stick my tape, tear that piece so that it doesn't overlap. Do it again. All right, looks pretty good right there. Take that off. I guess it's not totally straight. Maybe angles to the right a little bit, but that's okay. Three quarter of an inch gap. There we go. And it looks like I can get away with just one more. So we'll kind of wing this one. It's a little you what that's a little skinny there so what I'm gonna do is shift this one over a little bit just to kind of even it out the gap there and no one will know any difference go like that and maybe oops maybe shift this one just slightly there we go check that out that looks pretty even right I guess they're a little skinnier than these but you can't really tell so I'll tell you what, that's basically the technique. I'll finish out the rest and I'll show you how to like stick it down really good. All right, my graphic is totally complete now. And what we wanna do is make sure that all the tape is stuck down really good so that it doesn't bleed through when we paint it. So that's where the squeegee comes into play. You just wanna make sure to uh, squish everything down really good. And then wherever pieces overlap and there's a corner, that's always a really uh, likely spot for paint to get through. So you wanna make sure to really squeeze those down. Squeeze all these edges where it meets the exposed wood because we don't want any paint coming through there. You also, of course, don't wanna be doing that and peeling you know, the tape up, so make sure you kinda go in the direction of the tape and just get all the edges as good as you can. And it should be good enough, especially with the little painting technique I'll show you next. All right, now that all the tape is stuck down really well, it's time to paint it. And there's a couple things I want to do with this paint job. I want it to look a little old and worn and distressed, you know, kind of mixing that with this modern pattern. Also, I want it translucent enough that you can still see the really cool 
wood grain going through it. So the trick here is to spray it really light. Another added benefit of spraying it really light is that it's not really gonna bleed through the tape. If you go too heavy and it gets all liquidy and runny, there's a good chance that once it hits one of these corners, it's gonna to wanna to try to go under it. But if you spray it really light, it's almost like you know misting on a, a dusting of paint and it'll seal all the edges and then we can just add a couple of light coats and it should be good. So make sure, just you know, shake your can really good and then just make really light even strokes. Now I know that doesn't look like much, but that is totally fine for the first coat. We'll let that dry for a few minutes and then we'll put another two or three coats about that light and then that's it. And then I'll show you what to do after that. All right, so that first coat's dry. So now my second light coat, I'm gonna go this direction and go sideways. That way it kind of hits it from a different angle and gets a little better paint coverage. And that's it. Now I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll probably put one more from a different direction probably coming from this way, maybe at a slight angle, just to you know get a little better coverage, and that's it, and then we'll move on from there. All right, once the paint dried, I peeled all the tape off, and the graphic looks really cool. You could just leave it alone like this, but I think I'm gonna take it up a notch and really finish it out. Also, I still want it a little more translucent than this. You can kind of see the grain, but I wanna see it a lot more. So I think I'm also gonna build a frame in a similar finish with silver. So what I did was I took some boards that are, I think this board here is, about half inch or so and I took a three quarter inch board and I cut it at the 10 inches and then uh, for the top and the bottom I did the same thing except I made them a little longer to overlap so it'd be like that and then there'll be one here at the bottom and I'm gonna paint them the same type of silver so let me show you real quick how I finish those all right now for the trim pieces we're just gonna finish them just like the uh, graphic so I don't think I mentioned earlier but I slightly rounded off all the corners just to make it a little smoother looking and we're just gonna do a really light paint job on them again so shake up your can and do a really light coat. Let that dry and we'll go from the other side and then we'll probably put on one or two more coats and uh, make sure that all the sides of the, the water covers once it's dry, you know, flip it over and do that. And once it's all coated, then I'll show you how to finish everything. All right, now that all of the trim pieces are dried, it's time to kind of dull down the shine a little bit because I said I want it to look a little aged and, and uh, you know, patinaed. So all I'm doing on the trim pieces is I'm sanding it very lightly just till the shine kind of goes away and some of the wood grain pops through. And I'm just using about a 200 grit sandpaper or so. I'll do that to all the trim pieces. Now on the board itself, we're just gonna be able to kind of get a similar effect by doing the wax. And we're also gonna wax these when we're done. So let me finish sanding these and then I'll apply the wax and show you how all that goes. All right, and like I just said, I wanna dull down the shine on the uh, graphic itself too so what i'm gonna use is a little finishing wax here so just put some on there and then when you wipe it on uh, it may not quite show on camera but what's going to happen is it will slightly wear it down and then uh, you should be able to see the uh, wood grain popping through the other cool effect is that it will like i said kind of age it and then also when you peel the tape off there might be a little texture to it you can kind of feel the edges of these and once we rub it down with the wax it'll smooth everything out so it's just a really nice smooth surface so i'll finish this out and then uh, when it's done then we'll do the same thing on the trim pieces just apply a little wax to them and everything will be done and i'll just nail it together and i'll show you what it all looks like finished all right and there we go all finished turned out really cool got the super modern uh, graphic paint job on there on top of the uh, wood grain which is a cool combo and then i kind of distressed the uh trim on there so it kind of has like an industrial vibe to it and turned out pretty interesting and uh, it's exactly the technique I used for my desktop which you can see here it matches uh, the only difference here is that this plywood uh, I use for the desktop is a little bit nicer grade and now that I'm remembering back this spray paint was slightly different than the one I used today this spray paint was a metallic silver uh, automotive wheel spray paint and this one was just your standard spray paint that you can get you know, pretty much anywhere. So um, I did notice that when I put wax on this one that it kind of silvered all the wood. So it has kind of a cool uh, retro vintage look to it while the automotive paints just stayed as is and the wood stayed as is. So you know, a little bit cleaner looking but the technique of taping everything off and all that is exactly the same. So if you're interested in how I did it, here you go.